So let's take a look at the global impact of allergic rhinitis and asthma. It is estimated that there are at least 400 million sufferers with allergic rhinitis globally. The prevalence within Europe is between 17 and 29% and in the UK the prevalence is 26%. We don't have exact figures for Ireland, although we estimate our figures to be very similar to that of the UK. The World Health Organization in 2019 estimated that there are 262 million sufferers with asthma globally and in that year alone 461,000 deaths as a result of asthma. Ireland has the fourth highest prevalence globally, with at least 10% of the population having asthma. And we estimate that 20% of children will experience asthma symptoms at some point. The economic impact of allergic rhinitis and asthma is striking. The European Union in 2014 estimated an indirect loss of 30 to 50 billion euro per year as a result of reduced productivity due to undertreated allergic rhinitis. In the US, an estimated 4 million lost working days per year and 2 million lost school days per year as a result of allergic rhinitis has been shown. In Ireland, asthma is estimated to cause 12 missed working days and 10 missed school days per year and is estimated to cost the state at least 472 million euro per year. We know that the prevalence of allergies and allergic rhinitis is increasing globally but this was corroborated by a large international study um, called the ISAAC study or International Study of Asthma and Allergies in Childhood. This is where they took a group of 13 to 14 year old teenagers and they established that the prevalence was 13%. Um, the prevalence of allergic rhinitis that is. Eight years later, they looked at a very similar group of 13 to 14 year olds and this time the prevalence had increased from 13 up to 19% over just that eight year period. A smaller Irish study based in Cork um, looked at six to nine year old uh, primary school students and again in 2002 they found a 7.6% um, prevalence of allergic rhinitis. Five years later, in 2007, they looked at a similar group of uh, primary school children within that age group and they found a, a rise to 10.6% prevalence. What's particularly surprising is compared to other diseases, we're seeing this rise and striking rise in, in prevalence demonstrated over such a short period of time.